project is called The Incredible Disappearing Boy. Um, it's kind of a vehicle for my songs, but it was, a bit, it was designed to be a bit more than that. The idea being that I'm the incredible disappearing boy, I keep coming up with like a song every two years and releasing it and then disappearing again. My name's Sam Bates, um, I'm a musician and a recording engineer. I've been in bands since I was sort of 17 and I've done the rock thing. You know, I've been a session musician with people um, and I've finally managed to pull my finger out and actually get around to rec sort of recording some of my own material now, so that's kind of why we're sat here today. The idea with this is because I can play most instruments to a relatively terrible standard, um, I tend to do that because I've got my studio, I've got all the, the tools to do it. And this one, I wanted to get some really great players in and just see where they took the songs. To taste your white wine with the devil. On the drums, we've got Richard Millen. Um, Rich is a good friend of mine. We go back quite a few years and played in bands together before. Um, he's an amazing drummer. And I never get to play with him because he's always, he lives in Berlin now. So you know, the chances are very, very scarce. He just happened to be over here on like a sort of five week tour. Than calling it like Sam Bates uh, project, and giving it a name means it could grow into a band, or it could be me, it could be it's quite pretty open ended, really. We've got Cinzano Taylor, Ian Taylor, in on bass. Um, Ian's um, he's a sort of local musician, tutor, all around good guy. He's an amazing guitarist, amazing bass player, got brilliant feel. Um, knows his way around the guitar like no one else. So I just figured if someone's just going to be thrown in the deep end, he'd be the guy to do it really. I really wanted to get other musicians involved on this because um, everyone hears things in different ways. So whereas I might have a sort of a set idea of how a bass line should go, or a drum beat should go, or, you know, what kind of keyboard sound would be great over a certain part of the song. Somebody else might just throw something out of the left field and be like, wow, that's definitely a much better idea. The roads piano sort of didn't hit, so the piano came forward and they yeah. let the roads rise out the back of the piano. Yeah, that was kind of the thing I had in Yeah, because yeah, that would give sort of... Yeah, and then you get the piano kind of yeah, taking yeah, over the, the chords yeah. and yeah. then, you know, the roads yeah. just sort of uh, the thing that comes from it. That's just the so it feels like I'm hitting the chords a bit hard for it then. John Bucket on keyboards. I mean, he's again, he's just he's outstandingly talented. He's an amazing keyboard player, great on guitar, you know, brilliant bassist. He's a good composer. So you know, just seems like the right man really. He's far better at doing this stuff with the piano than I am. We've had a couple of horn players. I mean, sorry, about and Adam Wiltshire on trumpet, Amy Fry on saxophone. Um, who both you know, I've played with before, I've produced before. Some sensible shoes you never had to wear. Uh, definitely had, um, had a sound in mind. You know, bands like Wilco and people like Jackson Brown and Brian Adams, all of that Americana stuff. Um, but with a British action thing like Beatles, there's a bit of bowling stuff in there as well. Um, I wasn't sure if uh, like the musicians that I brought in um, would have cottoned onto it. I didn't want to like, sort of direct them to say I wanted to sound like this. But luckily they got in and within about 20 minutes of setting up and jamming, they just got the vibe absolutely right. You love me in the springtime with the flowers in full bloom, with the sand, the cut grass in the air. Would it be safe to assume 
Yeah, they're kind of they're kind of personal. So there's a couple of them that are, that are definitely personal, and there's a couple of them that more tell like a slightly universal story. Broadly keep themes universal when I'm writing lyrics. So I don't want to. I think hopefully people can relate to it, even the ones that are kind of written about my life. Um, I try to keep things open ended. I am cold and I am shy. Oh, I'm a to be in a studio working on something that I really enjoy that's actually my own that I can take away and use at the end of it. Because um, as a producer I, I quite often have bands in that are, that are great um, but I don't have any kind of musical say in it. I'm just kind of the guy that hits record and moves the mics around. So it's nice to actually be a musician again. So is this... Hey for the morning Standard version was the version that's um, got like extra stuff like the that content. Um, so be able to download the, the raw files to mix if you're an audio engineer and I'm some extra artwork and stuff like that. So now I'm quite excited about doing something a bit different with the release. I try to open up my heart. It's great. I've been grinning for days. It's been brilliant. But it's sewed up so tight. Just so 